and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode ten of Fargo. It's the finale. I have tissues. I have my black currant squash. The title of this episode is Palindrome, and a palindrome is a like a word or even a series of words, like a phrase where it's spelt the same forwards as backwards. So you use the same letters in the same sequence, forwards and backwards. I was really, I was having such a giggle before I was gonna do this video. I was trying to just think up some palindromes so I could just give you some examples off the top of my head. And the first and only one I came up with was boob. Make of that what you will. But there is a brilliant website called palindromelist.net, which I went to to kind of give you some examples of some longer ones because they're really good uh, so here's one a dog a plan a canal pagoda so if you if you write that down a dog a plan a canal pagoda whether you read it forward or backwards it's the same letters in the same order how there's a santa at nasa a slut nixes sex in tulsa for those of you who like a uh, slightly raunchier, maybe slightly misogynist <laughs> palindromes, this is my personal favourite. As I pee, sir, I see Pisa. Now, what I would love to be able to say is that there are going to be multiple palindromes in the script of this episode, and I am going to identify all of them as if I was some sort of palindrome expert. That, however, is not likely. I'm actually slightly dyslexic. I'm a writer, <laughs> but, and I love to read, but I often have to play around with words and sort of put them back in their proper order because I don't see them that way. So I am going to be, if that's, if that's the game of this episode, Count me out, I'm just gonna be watching the thing and you guys can all tell me in the comments afterwards if there was some amazing um, stuff going on. But yeah, just before <clears throat> we go into the episode, which I would never want to do, it's like I really want to see it, but I don't want this season to be over. It really has been a particularly exceptionally done and just massively enjoyable season of television for multiple reasons that I'll get into at the end when I do my review. But I've loved this. I've absolutely loved this. We wound up last episode with kind of multiple cliffhangers. We had our showdown at Sioux Falls, which was just perfect. The whole episode was perfect, let alone the, you know, the final scenes. But to get Hansi's betrayal was just beautiful. Yeah, having Martin Freeman narrate the history as if we were in like, I don't know, a history lesson or something was, it was hilarious. I'm just, oh my God, I actually, I literally did do what I said I was going to do. I got up from doing a review. I went running down the hallway to to the bedroom and, and I said to my wife, we have to watch, we, we have to watch episode nine immediately. <laughs> And we did. Let, I watched it immediately with her. I was just like, "You have to see this. This is fucking insane." And she absolutely loved it. I mean, literally from the opening with the book, sort of history being read, she was giggling her her head off. Which is like, "Oh my god, this is fantastic!" Yeah, it actually gave me a Princess Bride vibe. Now I think you ought to go to sleep. Something about the way that it was being read and the almost like the comic. The comical aspect of it had me feel that. We've had our showdown. The showdown has been had. Almost all of the police are dead. The South Dakota State Police were eviscerated, just taken apart, which I, I was the least surprising thing about the episode. So Hansi actually set up a situation whereby the Gerhards thought they were coming to deal with Kansas City, but they were coming to deal with the South Dakota State Police. So you end up with like, I mean, it felt like a Western. 
but then this actual this series, season has felt like a western in certain parts i feel like i'm watching a different genre of thing every time it's you love it but you know they try and get rid of lou thank god lou doesn't leave he comes back it all goes down dodd is dead um bear is dead Mar gerhardt is dead they're all dead everybody's dead day <laughs> every gerhardt is dead except for charlie who is in prison and he's now going to have no one to fend for him they have been wiped off the map they have been liquidated but not by kansas city by hansi hansi is now in pursuit of ed and peggy so that plot line is there's still running we don't know how that's going to finish hank is in dire straits he's been shot in the abdomen i'm worried for him i thought ted danson's performance throughout the season has been incredible but particularly that look that he gave when when lou says see you see you for dinner on sunday and you see for this moment him be like oh my god i'm never gonna have dinner with them again on a sunday and then he looks at lou with this look like you can go i will survive this and i just i hope he does i don't want him to lose betsy while he's alive but just is so much i mean little molly has got to go through so much now <sighs> that's what's going on with them betsy is not well at all she collapsed molly went running in to show her a picture and found her on the floor she was making some sort of punch or something and the jugs glass jug smashed all over the floor and then when lee was trying to phone home earlier in the episode there's no one there so they're in hot she's been hospitalized i'm concerned that's why i have the tissue i think there's really i mean obviously the elephant in the room is the ufo that everyone saw and has been a theme throughout the season we've several times over not only seen a ufo but the seeing of a ufo has actually had an impact on, on events bear would have probably killed lou solverson if the ufo didn't turn up rye probably wouldn't have been hit by peggy's car in the first place had the ufo not shown up if you remember hansi had a moment where he didn't see the ufo before but when he was searching for rye at the Waffle Hut, he was doing the sort of his forensic search outside the Waffle Hut. He had that moment, you know, was that the moment that he decided he was going to betray Gerhard? He was just done. Amazing. So they've set up a lot for this finale. We don't need to talk about it any longer. It's time to get it on. Let's have at it. This is a true story. He was freezing. The events depicted took place in Minnesota, North and South Dakota in 1979. Oh my God, I honestly thought it was a... Oh my God. Is she dead or alive? She's dead, oh he killed her. <sighs> I thought this would be a twist. respect for the dead don't do this to me Fucking hell. oh god molly well done betsy hey noreen doc says yeah had a reaction to those pills they gave you. Damn it. Is Lou back? No. And no word either. 
My dad? Same. No word. She knows. You stay lying down, you. And it's okay. I'll be right here. That night, I had a dream. About what? It felt so real. Even though I knew it couldn't be. Or wasn't yet. Yes, Mom. I dreamt of a magical future filled with wondrous devices where everything you could ever want would be available in one amazing place. Costco. Um. And there was happiness there. But then I saw farther still. Years. Decades into the future. I saw a handsome older man. His back still straight. <gasps> visited by his children and grandchildren. People of accomplishment. I saw chaos. Fracture of peace and enlightenment. And I worried that the future I'd seen, magical, and filled with light. Might never come to pass. No, it's gonna but say it's gonna. And dinner Sunday? Mm -hmm. I'll be in a suit of armor. Mm -hmm. Ah, my God! Just like witches at Black Masses. What's the trouble, young fella? <gasps> oh, shit! Sorcerer of death construction. Oh, fuck me. Thought Lee was out of this. Up. Yes. There you go. The lights are on, but no one's home. Your girlfriend's not going to be there, Mike. I don't think he really gives a shit, but. Bothered. Just a little further. Wow, she's amazing. Fuck. Hansi, you are burnt to shit. Why don't you just fuck off? Oh! Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the phone. I'm gonna call. Come on, come on. Let's go. Come on. I'm looking for the Phoenix food. Are they in Phoenix Foods? Oh, oh no guys don't no they're gonna freeze to death aren't they this is a really stupid idea she blindsided me okay pack of wolves at the door i didn't think the bitch didn't think she'd be dumb enough to sucker me she saved your life you asshole sit down you can do it. I've got an awful feeling about like this for Ed now. I don't think Ed's making out of that freezer. Baby, I don't think we're going to make it. Why don't you say that, Ed Blankwist? We've come this far. Even if we get out of this, I don't think we're going to make it. Who and me? Don't say that. Oh. This. 
What, what we've been through. That's what that's what seals the bond, makes us stronger. Peg. No, no. I I know I had my doubts. I know, but I'm I'm sure now. Hey, I'm sure. Will you just let me talk? You're always trying to fix everything, but sometimes nothing's broken. I love you. All I'm ever gonna want is to get back to what we had. Does Hansi? Jesus. Hello. Yeah. Oh, come on. Be reasonable. Come on. It's a little old lady, you prick. I decree no more schnitzel or strudel. <laughs> Let's get some American food up in there. <laughs> Oh, he is fantastic. I, just, I love the fact that he didn't say motherfucker in front of the little old lady. Who's this, Buffalo? Yeah. You're dead, Buffalo. You're with Kansas City now. What does he think he's doing? He thinks it's his? No. Nope. Awful news for you, my friend. Forget something? Well, he capped me. I thought nobody was home. We're here. Remind me which one you are again? Kid Otto had with the maid? You see the shotgun, right? You couldn't afford a real one? Times are tough, friendo. Pulls! A handy's Otto's! Shit! Do you know what? I had been wondering that because they kept calling him half breed. And I was like, who's. like, how. Oh my god. Shit! To Hansi. Could ha maybe Hansi's the oldest son. And it's him, he's the one that's taken over. Oh my god. I so wish I'd said that out loud. I'd had that thought. Because I'd even gone round in circles, just like, maybe, I couldn't, first I just couldn't see Otto taking in a kid that wasn't his, period. He's not exactly a philanthropist. But then I thought, what if it was Floyd's child with someone else? Because I can imagine Floyd at least playing the philanthropist and saying that we need to take in this child that was secretly hers. But no, it was Otto's. With a maid, I'm like, is it the maid we just saw cooking in the kitchen? The one who grassed up Simone to Floyd? Shit. Oh my God, that's amazing. Play. Hey. Do you know what the definition of the word sovereignty is? Oh. Sovereignty is absolute power and authority. Like a king? Exactly. Which is who I am. Wow. Your king. See, today is my coronation day. 
pledge fealty? A new king should start his reign. An act of kindness. <sighs> and an act of cruelty. That way, your subjects know that you're capable of both. <laughs> Problem is, Wilma works in the kitchen. She has already received my kindness. To wit, a brand new car. And oh, fuck. All the money that was in that cabinet you were searching. Damn. <gasps> journey home to bathe in that warm champagne that is corporate praise. Who knows? Maybe they'll even throw us a parade. I love a parade. He locked it down without doing anything. It's just... He has been so fucking lucky.